In 1753, Miguel Hidalgo y Castilla was born near Guanajuato, Mexico. At the time, the name of the country was not Mexico, but rather it was called New Spain because Europeans from Spain had settled in the area and claimed it as their own. But most of the people living in Mexico weren't from Spain. They and their ancestors had lived there long before the Spanish arrived and conquered their lands. Miguel was the second son of Cristobal Hidalgo y Castilla, Ana Maria Gallaga Mandarte y Villaseñor. Miguel's dad was an ambassador or government worker of the hacienda, or town. When Miguel was growing up, his family was fairly rich, so he had a good, easy life. He was considered to be a Creole person, which means his ancestors were Spanish. He had loving parents and fun with his older brother, Jose Joaquin. When Miguel was 12, his father sent him and his brother to the city of Valladolid to go to school. Miguel studied religion, and after completing a lot of courses on various religious topics, he became a Catholic priest in 1778. After he was a priest, Miguel Hidalgo became known as Father Hidalgo. He returned to his hometown university to teach philosophy, which means the study of how humans think, and theology, which means the study of God. Now that Miguel was an adult and a priest, he was able to travel and meet people. He loved to learn and was particularly interested in European ways and thinking. This was not the normal path for a Mexican Catholic priest in the 18th century. Most priests stayed in their church area and spent their days praying, but Miguel was too curious about the world and too social to stay in one place and not ask questions and learn new things. This is the best way to learn new things, to be curious and ask lots of questions. Even though he was different from most priests at the time, Miguel became the rector of a church of San Nicolas in 1790. Unfortunately, though, the other priests in the area did not like the way he behaved, so he was only in the role as rector for two years. Father Hidalgo moved on to lead the churches in the towns of Colima and then San Felipe Torres, Mocas, and later Dolores. Besides studying, he also grew grapevines and olive trees in the church gardens. He opened a pottery-making studio or art area and taught himself to make pots. He had many hobbies to keep his life interesting. Father Hidalgo was also very giving and showed compassion for poor people in the towns where he lived. Compassion means concern for someone suffering. He put on classes to teach the people skills they could use to make money, like carpentry or woodworking and blacksmithing, which means to make things out of iron or metal. And because of his interest in learning and philosophy, Father Hidalgo became very involved with a small group of educated people that lived in the town. They had gone to university and learned about politics and government, and they weren't happy with the way that Spain was controlling their country. Remember, at this time, Spain controlled Mexico and didn't let them vote or make their own decisions. In 1808, a new Spanish leader named Joseph was put in charge of the Spanish territories, including New Spain, where Father Hidalgo and his friends lived. The people there did not like the new rulers, as they were mean and greedy. So Father Hidalgo and his friends planned to remove the Spanish rulers from being in charge. The Spanish rulers learned that there was a secret plot to take over, so Father Hidalgo and his friends had to speed up their plans. In Dolores, Father Hidalgo climbed to the top of the church where he lived and with all of his might rang the church bell. This was the signal that their fight against the Spanish rulers had begun. Then he went outside the church and waved a banner of the Virgin Mary of Guadalupe. This was September 16, 1810, and became a famous event called the Grito de Dolores, or Cry of Dolores. This was the beginning of the Mexican people's fight for freedom. Father Hidalgo's second-in-command was a military captain named Ignacio Allende. Together, they led a group of Creole and First Nations men into towns and cities near where they lived. They gathered more and more in the towns and cities, and slowly the size of their group grew. With each town they moved through, the group took control of the Spanish government and replaced it with their own. 
But unfortunately, as the group grew bigger, so did its problems. Father Hidalgo's goal was to take power back from the Spanish, but the group of men that became his followers grew more and more violent. And the church was not happy about what they saw happening. They removed Father Hidalgo from his role as priest and member of the church. Miguel was no longer called Father Hidalgo anymore, but that didn't stop him from his mission of removing the Spanish from power in his country. Miguel and his followers continued to move through more cities until they finally arrived at Mexico City, the biggest city in Mexico. There the Spanish were ready with their army. Gunshots rang out. Smoke filled the air. A battle broke out between the Spanish army and Miguel's army. Soon Miguel and his army had to retreat or move back to safety into a city called Guadalajara. There he formed a small government that declared that they were in charge. One of the first things his government did was declare an end to slavery and promise to return lands to the indigenous people. These were very modern ideas for the time. In January 1811, Miguel and his men gathered at Calderon Bridge outside the city of Guadalajara to meet a small Spanish army for battle. The Spanish army was well-trained and well-armed. Weapons were fired. The Spanish had a better army, and Miguel and his soldiers had to run away. After this loss, his friend, Captain Allende, became the new leader of the group of rebel fighters. But some of the survivors of the battle followed Miguel north to join a group that was setting up in a city that is now known as San Antonio. Along the way, they were captured by the Spanish army. The group members were put on trial and were found guilty of fighting against the ruling Spanish. Miguel and his fellow soldiers had fought bravely but did not survive to continue fighting with their countrymen. But the revolution that he started continued even after he was gone. In 1821, Mexico eventually won the war against Spain and became independent. September 16th is now celebrated as Mexico's Independence Day, similar to the 4th of July in the United States. This is the day Mexico became its own country. Every year on this date, Mexican people celebrate their heritage and brave people like Miguel Hidalgo who fought for their freedom. Usually the president of Mexico will do the same thing Hidalgo did, go to the church's bell tower and ring the bell to signal the start of the War of Independence. We can learn a lot from Miguel Hidalgo y Castilla. He was very curious and was always learning. He also had many hobbies to keep his life interesting. He was also very brave and risked his life to push out the Spanish rulers who had controlled his country. He was organized and a strong leader and passionate about freedom. And because of this, he had many people who followed him into battle and believed in his cause. Because of his bravery and beliefs, Miguel is now remembered as the father of Mexican independence. Learning about Miguel is also a great chance to learn more about Mexico, its people and its culture. Mexico has a vibrant culture with delicious food, music, dancing, and artwork. Family is very important in a culture where they take care of each other and meet often to eat and enjoy their time together. Mexican culture has also become a big part of American culture, seeing that over 36 million people living in the United States are of Mexican ancestry. Be sure to look up some videos about Mexico and Mexican culture. Thanks for listening to this episode about Miguel Hidalgo, and be sure to tune in next Monday for a new episode. Thank mm-hmm. you.